Brought to you by wikivd.com The Big Short Film The Big Short is a 2015 American biographical comedy-drama film directed by Adam McKay and written by McKay and Charles Randolph based on the 2010 book The Big Short, Inside the Doomsday Machine by Michael Lewis about the financial crisis of 2007-2008 which was triggered by the United States housing bubble. The film stars Christian Bale, Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, Brad Pitt, Melissa Leo Hamish, Linklater, John Magaro, Rafe Spall, Jeremy Strong, Finn Wittrock, and Mariso Tomei. The film is noted for the unconventional techniques it employs to explain complex financial instruments. Among others it features cameo appearances by Margot Robbie, Anthony Bourdain, Selena Gomez and Richard Thaler who break the fourth wall to explain concepts such as subprime mortgages and collateralized debt obligations is a meta-reference. Several other actors directly address the audience most frequently Gosling, who serves as the narrator. The film began a limited release in the United States on December 11, 2015 followed by a wide release on December 23 by Paramount Pictures. The film was a financial and critical success grossing $133 million against a $50 million budget and receiving positive reviews. The film was nominated for five Academy Awards including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Supporting Actor for Bale, Best Film Editing, and Best Adapted Screenplay winning the last plot. The film consists of three separate but concurrent stories loosely connected by their actions in the years leading up to the 2007 housing market crash. Cyan Capital storyline in 2005 Eccentric hedge fund manager Michael Burry discovers that the United States housing market is extremely unstable being based on high-risk subprime loans. Anticipating that the market will collapse during Q2 2007 as interest rates would rise from adjustable rate mortgages he envisions an opportunity to profit. His plan is to create a credit default swap market allowing him to bet against market-based mortgage-backed securities. He proposes his idea to several major investment and commercial banks who readily accept Burry's huge long-term bet. Exceeding $1 billion entails paying substantial monthly premiums to the banks. This requirement sparks his client's vocal unhappiness believing he is wasting capital and many demand that he reverse and sell but Burry refuses. He later discovers that the banks collude with a major bond rating company to maintain ratings on worthless bonds allowing them to sell off the losing positions before the true values became known. Under pressure, Burry restricts withdrawals from his fund angering his investors. Eventually the housing market collapses and his fund's value increases by 489%, with an overall profit of over $2.69 billion. Frontpoint Partners storyline Deutsche Bank salesman Jared Vennett is one of the first to understand Burry's analysis learning about his actions from one of the bankers who sold Burry an early credit default swap. Bennett uses his quant to verify that Burry's predictions are likely true and decides to put his own stake in the market, earning a fee on selling the swaps to firms who will be profitable. When the underlying mortgage bonds fail, a misplaced phone call alerts Frontpoint hedge fund manager Mark Baum to his plans, and he is convinced to buy credit default swaps from Bennett due to his own personal distaste with the banks. Bennett explains that the market collapse is being further perpetuated by the packaging of subprime loans into collateralized debt obligations large enough to be considered AAA ratings. Baum sends staff to investigate the Miami housing market, and they discover that mortgage brokers are making money by selling risky mortgages 
to the Wall Street banks which created the bubble. In early 2007 these loans begin to default, but the prices of the CDOs somehow rise. Meanwhile ratings agencies refuse to downgrade the ratings of these failing bonds. When Baum questions an acquaintance at Standard and dishonesty amongst the credit rating agencies, when Baum's employees question Vernet's motives, he maintains his position and invites Baum and his team to the American Securitization Forum in Las Vegas. Baum interviews CDO manager Wing Chow, who creates CDOs on behalf of an investment bank claiming to represent the interests of investors. Chow describes how synthetic CDOs make a chain of increasingly large bets on the faulty loans, involving up to 20 times as much money as the loans themselves. Baum horrifyingly realizes that the fraud will completely collapse the global economy and decides to purchase as many swaps as possible profiting from the situation at the bank's expense. Waiting until the last minute to sell their position Baum's fund makes a profit of $1 billion. But he laments that the banks won't accept blame for the crisis. Brownfield Fund storyline Young investors Charlie Geller and Jamie Shipley accidentally discover a prospectus by Venet convincing them to become involved in the swaps as it fits their strategy of buying cheap insurance with big potential payouts, since they are below the capital threshold for an ISDA master agreement required to enter into trades like Burries and Borms. They enlist the aid of retired securities trader Ben Rickett. When the bond values and CDOs rise despite default, Skeller suspects the banks of committing fraud. The three also visit the American Securitization Forum where they learn that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has no regulations to monitor mortgage-backed security activity. They managed to successfully make an even more profitable payout deal than other hedge funds by shorting the higher-rated mortgage securities. These securities were considered highly stable, and the banks were willing to sell swaps on them extremely cheaply. Geller and Shipley are initially ecstatic but Rickett is disgusted, pointing out an impending economic collapse and the human effect that's going to come from it. In particular the fact that when unemployment goes up 1%, 40,000 more people will die. Furthermore, they realize that the banks have colluded with the ratings agency to maintain the value of their CDOs in order to sell their worthless positions and then short them before the inevitable crash. Horrified, they try to tip off the press and their families about the upcoming disaster and the rampant fraud, but nobody believes them. As the housing market begins to collapse, Ben, while on vacation in England, is able to sell their swaps and points out that Europe is starting to feel the effects of the collapse. Ultimately they make a profit of $80 million but their faith in the system is broken. Epilogue Jared Vennett makes $47 million off the selling of swaps. Mark Baum becomes more gracious from the financial fallout and his staff continue to operate they fund. Charlie Geller and Jamie Shibley go their separate ways after failing to soothe the ratings agencies with Charlie moving to Charlotte to start a family and Jamie still running the fund. Ben Rickett returns to his peaceful retirement. Michael Burry closes his fund after public backlash and multiple IRS audits. Now only investing in water commodities. It is noted that as of 2015, Banks are selling CDOs again under a new label, a bespoke tranche opportunity. Development In 2013 Paramount acquired the rights to the 2010 non-fiction book The Big Short, Inside the Doomsday Machine by Michael Lewis, to develop it into a film which Brad Pitt's Plan B Entertainment would produce. On March 24, 2014, Adam Mackay was hired to write and direct a film about the housing and economic bubble. 
Screenwriter Charles Randolph, who co-wrote the film with Mackay, said one of the first challenges was finding the right tone for the film. He told creative screenwriting in general it was trying to find the right tone that was slightly funnier than your average Milos Forman comedy, which is all grounded character-based but not so satirical where you got wag the dog. Somewhere between there was what I was shooting for. Once I got the tone down, then I went through the plot. The market's movements provided you with an underlying plot. You make your short deal then the bank is trying to squeeze you out and then it all breaks loose? So that was pretty easy and it provided character arcs against that. Two years after Randolph wrote his draft, Mackay as director rewrote Randolph's screenplay. It was McKay's idea to include the celebrity cameos in the film to explain the financial concepts. Casting On January 13, 2015 Variety reported that Brad Pitt, Christian Bale and Ryan Gosling were set to star in the film with Pitt producing the film along with Dad A. Gardner and Jeremy Kleiner. Plan B Entertainment would finance with Paramount handling the distribution rights. Before this, Pitt had already starred in the adaptation of the author's Moneyball for which he was nominated for an Oscar. On January 14, it was announced that Steve Carell would also star. On April 21, 2015, more cast was revealed by Deadline including Melissa Leo, Marisa Tomei, Tracy Letts, Hamish Linklater, John Megaro, Byron Manrafe, Spall, Jeremy Strong and Finn Wittrock. Charles Randolph wrote the initial draft. Max Greenfield joined the ensemble cast of the film on April 23, 2015. Karen Gillan tweeted about her involvement in the film on May 8, 2015. Filming Principal photography on the film began on March 18, 2015 in New Orleans, Louisiana. On March 25, filming was taking place on General de Gaulle Boulevard in the Algiers section of New Orleans. On May 8, Gillan confirmed she was shooting her scenes. On May 20, 2015 filming took place on Mercer between Prince Street and Spring Street in Manhattan, New York City. On May 22, the production crew recreated the offices of failed investment firm Lehman Brothers in the lobby of the New York State Department of Financial Services in Manhattan. An assistant counsel for the Department of Financial Services played one of the extras in the scene. Release on September 22, 2015 Paramount set the film for a limited release on December 11, 2015, and a wide release on December 23, 2015. The film was released on DVD and Blu-ray on March 15, 2016. Box Office The Big Short grossed $70.3 million in the United States and Canada and $63.2 million in other countries for a worldwide total of $133.4 million. Against a production budget of $50 million, the film was released in eight theaters in Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, and Chicago on December 11, 2015 and earned $705,527. It set the record for the best ever per screen gross for a film opening in eight locations, breaking the previous record held by Memoirs of a Geisha, and was the third biggest theater average of 2015 behind the four screen debuts of Steve Jobs and The Revenant. The film had its wide release on Wednesday, December 23, 2015, and grossed $2.3 million on its first day. In its opening weekend it grossed $10.5 million, finishing sixth at the box office. Critical Response On Rotten Tomatoes the film has an approval rating of 88% based on 281 reviews, with an average rating of 7.8, 10. The site's critical consensus reads, 
The Big Short approaches a serious complicated subject with an impressive attention to detail, and manages to deliver a well-acted, scathingly funny indictment of its real-life villains in the bargain. On Metacritic, the film has a score of 81 out of 100 based on 45 critics indicating universal acclaim. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of A on an A2F scale. IGN gave the film a score of 8.6, 10 praising its energetic direction in making a complicated tale palpable for the layperson even as it triggers outrage at the fat cats who help cause it. The New York Times upshot series stated the Big Short offered the strongest film explanation of the global financial crisis. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?